Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Let us pray, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, that we may magnify your holy name. We bless you, O Father God. We lift your name on high, O gracious God. We adore you, O Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A prayer of confession and assurance of pardon. Let us confess our sins to God and pray for his forgiveness. A moment of silence. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against each other in thought, in word, and in deed, in the evil we have done and the good we have not done through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins, especially during this period of Lent, as we seek your face and your hand during our time of praying and fasting, Lord. Lord, forgive us of our sins, present and past, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, as we lay our burdens at the foot of the cross, and may you grant us newness of life as we seek to serve you to the glory of God the Father. Amen. A prayer of thanksgiving. Father, we give you the thanks, we give you praise, we give you the honor, and we give you the glory for all that you have done for us in the past, all you continue to do for us at present and all that you promise to do for us in the future. Father God, you have been merciful to us. You have shown us your love and compassion during the period, this period of Lent. You have brought us joy and peace, the peace that surpasses all understanding, that continues to guard our hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. We just want to see. Thank you, Lord for being God all by yourself and for your saving grace in Christ Jesus. Amen.
chapter 19, verses 1 to 10. Paul in Ephesus While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? They answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hand on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether there were about twelve of them. He entered the synagogue and for three months spoke out boldly and argued persuasively about the kingdom of God. When some stubbornly refused to believe and spoke evil of the way before the congregation, he left them taking the disciples with him and argued daily in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. This continued for two years so that all the residents of Asia, both Jews and Greeks, heard the word of the Lord. This is the word of God.
Let us pray. Speaking God, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Through the power and guidance of your Holy Spirit, open our ears, our minds, and our hearts to receive your liberating and transforming word. Gracious God, may your revealed words spoken through my lips and the meditations of our hearts together find acceptance in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. On January 20, 2021, in the beautiful hills of Western St. Andrew, Jamaica, I was scheduled to conduct worship at the Almond Hill Methodist Church at 9 a.m. As I was admiring the surroundings, I noticed the steward fidgeting with the mixer. She had set up the mics and the keyboard, but there was no sound. She was unplugging and replugging, if that is a word, every connection, shifting cables, but nothing was happening. As she stood off of the board, I walked up to her and asked if I could help. She said she had done everything but couldn't understand why there were no lights, why there was no power coming to the board. I looked for the cord and saw that it was plugged in. So my next question was, even though I thought a silly one, I asked her, did you turn on the power? She looked at me dumbfounded. No. She hadn't thought that it was necessary to switch anything on once it was plugged in. She didn't realize that there was a switch. Reached behind the mixer, located the switch and pressed it. Then voila, there was power. The entire board lit up and we had sound. Brothers and sisters, this evening I invite us to reflect together under the theme, turn on the power, flip the switch. In what we commonly refer to as the Upper Room Discourse, found in John's Gospel, Jesus tells the disciples that he will send them the Holy Spirit to teach and remind them of all that they had experienced while with him. Then, in the first chapter of Acts, Jesus is preparing to ascend to his Father, and he says to the apostles, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Now this evening we encounter Paul at the church of Ephesus asking the believers he met there, Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? And they answered, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Acts 19.2 In essence, Paul is asking, Have you turned on the power? Have you flipped the switch? The response from the new converts may seem a strange one. After all, how could they have missed the earth-shattering events which took place in Jerusalem? How could they not have heard about the Messiah, about Jesus' ministry, death, and resurrection? How could they not have heard of the Holy Spirit? Did a word of the miracles performed through Peter reach Ephesus? And what about the persecutions at the hands of this same Paul? and the tragic but triumphant martyring of Stephen. Were they under a rock or hiding in a cave somewhere? Perhaps they were going through their days in blissful oblivion to all that was happening. They were possibly still too looking for the one whom John had said would come after him. And perhaps they had missed the fulfillment of prophecy because like John, they were looking for a different kind of messiah. This Jesus of Nazareth, who had so easily been put to death, could not be the one who came to set them free. I am sure you will agree that these must be the explanations for them to have been so clueless. The Acts of the Apostles, commonly referred to as Acts, is the fifth book of the New Testament and is a valuable history of the early Christian church. Acts was written presumably by Luke the Evangelist, and the Gospel according to Luke concludes where Acts begins, that is, with Christ's ascension into heaven. After an introductory account of the descent of the Holy Spirit on the Apostles at Pentecost, which is generally interpreted as the birth of the Church, Luke pursues as a central theme the spread of Christianity to the Gentile world under the guiding of the Holy Spirit. 
He also describes the church's gradual drawing away from Jewish traditions. The conversion of Paul and his subsequent missionary journeys are given a prominent place because as a reputed close associate of Luke, he was the renowned apostle to the Gentiles. Without Acts, a picture of the early church would probably be impossible to reconstruct. And with it as a reference point, the New Testament letters written by Paul are far more understandable. The Acts concludes very abruptly, rather abruptly after Paul has successfully preached the gospel in Rome, then the acknowledged center of the Gentile world. Acts teaches us about the worldwide mission of the Christian church. Acts shows us how the church is to respond when living in a predominantly pagan culture. And Acts tells us how the Christian movement came into being. It has, it is called a transitional book because it serves as a bridge between the gospels and the epistles. It is the historical link that joins the life of Christ with the growth of the Christian church. Our passage of focus for this evening highlights a church which originates out of the circumstances of a thriving multicultural society with a diverse religious background. A noted theologian argues that when Paul arrived, he met a church of newly converted Jews who often separated themselves from their Gentile brethren. The unity of the church, especially between Jewish and Gentile believers, was a big problem. As recorded later in the Revelation of John, the author wrote of this church, I know your works, your toil, and your patient endurance. I know that you cannot tolerate evildoers. You have tested those who claim to be apostles but are not and have found them to be false. I also know that you are enduring patiently and bearing up for the sake of my name and that you have not grown weary. But I have this against you, that you have abandoned the love you had at first. Remember then from what you have fallen. Repent and do the works you did at first. If not, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Revelations 2 verses 2 to 5. This was a church that had forgotten to turn on the power, to flip the switch. They were sitting in the dark, so to speak. As we continue to look at this scene, let us explore what is meant first by power. This is the ability or capacity to do something or act in a particular way. The capacity or ability to direct or influence the behavior of others or the course of events or to supply with energy. Then the switch. This is an appliance, an appliance or device used for making and breaking connection. Our power source is God. The Holy Spirit is the switch to truly access the power of God in our lives. Some persons go through life with the belief that once they are active in church, they are good. They think that the positions they hold and the monies they give are all that is important. Once they are confirmed, they have their membership ticket to heaven. They are connected to God, the power source, but they, like the disciples at Ephesus, never flip the switch to experience God's power working in them through the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, as Paul asked the church at Ephesus, let us also consider this question. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? Have you flipped the switch? Have you turned on the power? We too are living in multicultural societies. Some of us are even in strange lands. We may be getting distracted as they were and losing sight of, of what first drew us to Jesus and enabled us to offer loving service to God and to God's people. We may be ignorant to the fact that we need the switch, the Holy Spirit, to access God's power. But if we use Paul as an example from our passage of focus, we can see two clear benefits he experienced 
from flipping the switch and turning on the power. Paul had the power to be bold. And Paul had the power to persevere. At Ephesus, Paul entered the synagogue and for three months spoke out boldly. He argued persuasively about the kingdom of God. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, Paul was fearless in preaching and teaching the gospel, even in the diverse community of Ephesus. Paul did not allow the tension there to dissuade him from being true to his calling. Through his boldness, he was able to reach and win souls for Christ right there in Ephesus. This man, who was once the most notorious persecutor of Christians, had become arguably the fiercest promoter of the gospel of Christ. Because he was operating with the switch in the on position, nothing and no one could stop Paul from fulfilling his mandate. In the diverse communities in which we find ourselves, are we able to remain true to our faith? Are we able to resist the lure, the attractiveness of the society, the promises of fun and more fun, as well as the get-rich-quick gimmicks? Are we bold enough to hold fast to what we believe and not be swayed by all we see around us? Are we bold enough to speak out? and to speak up, even if we are the lone voice quiet crying in the wilderness? Are we bold enough to challenge the status quo? We have the power to be bold when we flip the switch. During his time in Ephesus, Paul encountered people who stubbornly refused to believe and spoke evil of the way before the congregation. He left them taking the disciples with them. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, Paul was able to persevere. Some people refused to accept the good news and tried to encourage others to reject the teachings also, but this did not deter Paul. He left them behind, taking the disciples with him, and went on arguing and lecturing nonetheless. And when Paul freed himself and the disciples from the negative people they encountered, he still did not relent. Paul spent two years arguing for and teaching all about the gospel of Christ. Paul persevered on his mission to win as many souls as possible for God's kingdom. John 16, 7-15 tells us about the power we experience when we flip the switch. But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin because people do not believe in me. About righteousness because I am going to the Father. Because I am going to the Father, where you can see me no longer and about judgment because the prince of this world now stands condemned. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. This power is reconfirmed in Luke's gospel account and again in Acts. Jesus said, I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Luke twenty-four forty-nine. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Acts 1 8. Jesus was telling his disciples the flip, the switch would be flipped. He was telling them the power would be turned on. 
Today, when we commit to and obey Jesus, we too have the power Jesus spoke about turned on within us. Power in me, power in you. When we flip the switch, like Paul, we have the power to be bold, to be Jesus' witnesses, to go all into all the world preaching the gospel. Like Paul, we have the power to persevere, to pick up our cross daily and walk with Jesus, to withstand persecution, trials, and tribulations, to remain hopeful when it seems that all hope is gone, to remain faithful to Christ, to be loving servants to the people of God even when they get on our last nerve and we feel like giving up. Brothers and sisters, on that beautiful Sunday morning, the sister had no clue why she was not getting the usual sound. She thought she had everything under control. All the cords were connected right. The plug was in the socket, but still no sound. Still no power. Like her, have you forgotten to flip the switch to turn on the power? Do you even realize that there is a switch to flip? This evening, as Paul prayed for those early Christians, I pray that you will experience the power of the indwelling of God's Holy Spirit. Especially as we navigate this Lenten period, may you pause and reflect on your spiritual life and find the switch to activate the power of God in your life. Brothers and sisters in Christ, turn on the power. Flip the switch. Have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? Today, not tomorrow. Turn on the power. Flip the switch. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, our living hope, we long for your glory and your power. Our hearts long to be overcome by your presence. Like the mighty rushing wind, fill this place. Baptize us with your fire. Spirit of truth, teach us all things and bring to remembrance the words of Jesus. Guide us into all truth. Give us power in our weakness to speak the word of God with boldness. Give us power in our weakness to persevere. For the sake of our Lord, and Savior Jesus Christ, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen.
Almighty God, we come before you through our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask, O oh God, that as we come, that you would cleanse us, that you would create in us clean hearts and renew right spirits within us. Gracious God, we ask your anointing at this time over the leaders of the Methodist Church. We ask your anointing, O oh God, over the body of Christ, over your people, over the youth, the young adults, the men, women, O oh God, over those within our societies, our leaders, O oh God. We ask that you would cleanse and anoint and give direction. Father God, may your Holy Spirit lead and direct all things that concern us. Lead and direct our decisions. Lead and direct our walks with you, O oh God. We commit all plans unto you. We commit our lives to you, Father. And we ask, Father God, that you would touch and anoint your people. Those, O oh God, who are seeking healing, may your anointing wash and cleanse them, Father. Those who are seeking, Father God, restoration in their families, Father God, for families that would have experienced, oh God, separation, loss, and grief, we ask that you would touch and saturate hearts, oh God, with your peace, saturate hearts with your grace, oh God. Let your people feel your presence within their homes, wherever they are. Mighty God, we even come before you asking that you would lead, Father God, those who need to come to you still father god those who are hearing your still voice and are fearful dear god those who have hesitations father god may you cleanse their minds oh god and cause them to just draw themselves to you may they be drawn to your love father may you surround them with believers in christ who would be father god light and life light and salt around them mighty father May they experience the love of God through outstretched arms, Father God, through people, Father God, who will share with them love and compassion and charity. Father, may your people experience your presence and your love. Father, we come before you for those who will be returning to schools, those who have returned, oh God, those who are probably within quarantine, those who are ill, Father God, with COVID, we ask your anointing. We pray for total healing and restoration, mighty Father. We pray for a revival to flow within the lands in the name of Jesus, oh God. A revival where people feel drawn nearer to you in a, in a brand new way, Father. God, where their faith, Father, their spiritual relationship with you would be deepened, dear God. We thank you in advance for a move of your Holy Spirit. Mighty God, even now during this Lenten period, we pray that we would have a greater understanding of our calling and of our purpose, that we will look deep into your word as we journey in the scripture, Father. We pray that it will not be just a usual Lenten period, but this will be a time where persons will be transformed by the renewing of our minds in the name of Jesus. Mighty God, we pray that this the, the the lesson of the resurrection of Christ, dear God, will help us to know that every situation that we may would have given up on, dear God, that you have the power to resurrect, Father God, things that need to be resurrected, dear God, hopeless situations. You have the power to touch and to revive and to breathe new life in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for that power of yours working in our lives, Father. So mighty God, we just ask that your Holy Spirit Spirit would lead us through this Lenten period. You would lead us, dear God, into the scriptures. You would help us to have a better understanding of what you are saying unto us, dear God. You will help us, O oh God, to have a better understanding of who we are in you in the name of Jesus, so that lives will not be wasted doing things that you have not, Father God, sanctioned, but we would start to do the things that you have purposed and called us to do. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. We thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you for the gift of Christ, O oh God. And we pray that we will not take this gift for granted. 
And Father God, at this time, we commit our bodies, we commit our lives, we commit our hearts to you. May you soften every hardened heart, O oh God. And help us, Father God, to love people in the way that you love your people. Help us to love ourselves in the way that you love us, O oh God. Mighty God, we come before you with all praise, with all honor, with all glory and all thanksgiving unto you through Jesus' almighty name. Amen. Christ as a light, illuminate and guide us. Christ as a shield, overshadow us. Christ under us, Christ over us, Christ beside us, on our left and right. This day be within and without us, lowly and meek yet all-powerful. Be in the heart of each to whom we speak, in the mouth of each who speaks to us. This day be within and without me, lowly and meek, yet all powerful. Christ as light, Christ as a shield, Christ beside me, on my left and my right. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and the people of God say, Amen. For being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.